Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, first off, let me give the good old US of A a big birthday shout out. Happy 4th of July to all of my fellow Americans. I know, man, trust me, these are weird times because COVID is still a thing, you know? But inevitably, people are going to get hammered at social events when we really should be social distancing. But that's not what this video is about. Today, we are comparing the base 13-inch MacBook Pro against its smarter, more good-looking, stronger, older brother the 4 USB-C MacBook Pro. The 4 USB-C MacBook Pro, which I'll sometimes call the 1799 Pro, does have many advantages that the base Pro didn't get. It's like Tim Apple discriminated against the poor base model because it didn't get the 10th gen upgrade treatment and it still runs on older DDR3 RAM. But for a difference of $500 between these two models here, is the sauce overhyped or is it actually worth it? Well, we aim to answer that question and more, but before we roll into the intro, I know the buying process for a MacBook is very tedious and more difficult than one would actually imagine. Thus, I am opening up my DMs for any who need help deciding which configuration you may need. So just shoot me a quick DM and go ahead and give me a follow while you're at it and let me know how your workload is typically so that I can make a better recommendation. But alright, let's get into some testing. Alright guys, I actually just did a video just like this one, but on the base MacBook Air versus this base 13 inch MacBook Pro. Only reason you missed it is because it's either waiting on your view later section or you don't have bell notifications. Which is a perfect time to remind everyone to ring that bell so you don't miss out on any future content and especially giveaways. Every day we're inching closer and closer to 50,000 subscribers and it's all thanks to you guys. But click the card on the top right if you want to see the base air versus the base 13 inch pro comparison for 2020. Okay, just like last video, I don't really want to bore you guys by going off a list of specs, so instead here they are. Pause or screenshot if you need to but pay particular attention to the difference in 8th gen chips versus the newer 10th gen chips found inside the more expensive model. When the base model was refreshed not too long ago for 2020, it wasn't exactly what I'd call a huge upgrade. It was really minor and everybody was super let down because Apple cheaped out yet again, surprise surprise, and didn't give us the newer 10th gen chips on the base model. Also notice the difference in RAM. The base Pro is still using lower clocked LPDDR3 memory memory, while the more expensive model has higher clock 3733 MHz LPDDR4X memory. So at least on paper, the more expensive model should do a way better job at managing multiple pro level apps, a key reason why some would want to get the more expensive model over the base one. Not to mention it comes with 16GB of onboard RAM on the more expensive model, while the base pro comes in with only 8GB of lower clocked RAM. Okay, let's switch things around and start with thermals because honestly, there's not a lot of sauce here. It's your pretty standard stuff. The 13-inch Pro has always been pretty good at handling any thermal issues. The advantage this design has is that it has that more rectangular design versus the wedge-shaped design of the Air. That way, there's just more room for those internals to breathe, man. But yeah, I mean, I started off both on idle as always, added one Safari tab, and then both kind of just flip-flop back and forth. One will get hotter and then the other, but the entire test I saw no strange spikes or any severe throttling that would raise any eyebrows. I then added 5 tabs to the mix and still pretty normal, then added Apple TV, Maps, Keynote, streamed on Hulu, and then eventually started exporting a small short video, and both handled everything like a champ. Like seriously, the design of this little guy to me is flawless. It's the perfect size and the best of both worlds, portability and power. And just because I was curious, I repeated the same test, but only this time using Chrome tabs instead of Safari tabs. As expected, Chrome did make the temperature slightly higher, but nothing like on the i5 Air. Jesus Christ, you throw 5 Chrome tabs on that machine, and might as well crack an egg and cook it while you watch Ozark on Netflix, no joke. So guys, in conclusion, thermals get a good pass from me, as you shouldn't expect overheating by doing regular schmegular tasks. Of course, when opening up pro apps, it will heat up, but that's where those beefier specs come in clutch. Which speaking of, let's go ahead and get started on some testing, and as always, the obligatory Geekbench test is up first, and here on the single core side, we do see a good bit of gains on the 4 USB-C model 
over the base, with the base scoring a single core score of 1023, while the more expensive model gets a 1239. So that's single core, but how about multi core? On the multi core side, the base is now scoring 3986, while the 1799 Pro is scoring a more reasonable 4382. They're modest gains, but from the looks of it, for $500, I'm not convinced. Not yet, anyway. Let's proceed. Next up, you already know baby a Cinebench R20. Thankfully, my desk didn't catch on fire since both of these computers do a good job at heat dissipation, but make no mistake, the fans definitely cranked up and were very audible, but that's typical when performing this specific test here. But in terms of results, the base MacBook Pro comes in with a score of 1479, while the more expensive 1799 model edges out with 1768. Again, modest gains, but I would think for $500 we'd see better results, but maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part. But let's check out graphics now and see if we see big gains there. So to mimic gaming potential on a computer, we head over to Unigen's Heaven benchmarking simulation. Here we get a good range of how well a computer is expected to perform, giving us several different scenes with varying degrees of graphical intensity. So, we averaged out 26.9 frames per second on the base pro, which isn't anything to brag about. It's passable, I guess, but the 4 USB-C Pro did fare better, crossing the 30 plus FPS milestone, coming in at 32.7 FPS. Anything below 30 FPS in my opinion is pretty terrible, but I guess every gamer is different. Over on Valley, we get similar improvements with the base pro averaging out 24.1 frames per second, and the 1799 Pro gets so close to the 30 mark, scoring 29.8. These are all modest gains when comparing raw numbers, so it seems that the 10th gen chips are helping in boosting that extra performance. Now we get to deeper testing using Blender, and Blender is a test that I know will take a while, and actually, there was a power outage at my house while testing, and so both batteries ran out, so I had to redo it. It's a crazy long test, just know. But, both computers did a decent job at finishing the test with the Base Pro coming in at 42 minutes and 13 seconds, while the 4 USB Pro did do better coming in with a time of 39 minutes and 52 seconds. I guess this goes to show that there are professionals out there where time is of the essence and as they say, time is money. So hey, who knows, maybe those few extra minutes may make it or break it for you. We move right along and going now to the GFX metal test to again tap into the graphical power of each machine. So let's see what's going on here. We can see across the board decent improvements. I mean, just look at the huge leap on the T-Rex test, for example. Really not sure if the 4 USB Pro slipped some ROYs before this test. I don't know, man. I, I just don't know. But at least the improvements here over the base are very modest. And then finally, finishing off with video editing and photo editing. And just like in my prior video, we again do very light edits on a short two minute clip and then export it using the same exact compressor settings on both machines. This is a category that is particularly important for someone like me, a YouTuber, who needs as much exporting and graphical power possible, so that editing is buttery smooth and I can get quick exports. But anyway, as expected, the 1799 Pro did finish first with a total time of 12 minutes and 14 seconds, while the Base Pro took a while longer exporting the clip in 14 minutes and 48 seconds. So if you're a video editor, these are the kinds of differences you can expect. And finally, we head over to Lightroom to round out this video and export 100 images with very light edits and we get a total export time of 39 seconds for the 4 USB Pro and the Base Pro did it in 48 seconds. Alright, let's digest everything. So guys, there it is. I truly hope this video at least helped you point out the differences in performance and there's quite a bit of differences here. It's not just that, but I genuinely feel the Base Pro should be renamed to something like the Semi Pro or the Pro Lite or something because the true Pro entry model that I would recommend anyone being serious about their art, their hobby, their passion or for their job is definitely the 4 USB-C Pro. It's not only what's inside but externally you get those two additional USB-C ports which are extremely important for creative professionals. Then there's the whole thing with the aged chipset in the base MacBook Pro, which over time will yield poorer results and will age far worse than if they had 10th gen chips to begin with. That is definitely a bad apple, but I mean it is intended to be an entry model. So yeah, for $500 you do get a lot. As a professional, storage is also important and the 1799 model doubles the storage to 512 gigabytes. You get newer and more modern chips 
better RAM, and those two additional ports. To me, I'd say it's definitely worth it, but only if you intend to take your creative passion to the next level. I wouldn't want to recommend this to anyone who does simple coding or PowerPoint presentations. Definitely get the air for that. Really, the Base Pro is good for those using light work of that processor with simple photo edits and the video edit once in a blue moon. But the 4 USB-C Pro definitely offers more versatility in opening up numerous pro-level applications while also offering more storage and faster, more modern internals. But guys, like I said, shoot me a DM if you're still stuck and don't know which to choose. I hope everyone stays safe for those celebrating the 4th of July, and I'll catch you guys real soon. Peace.